Hi everyone, Michael Smith here. At the medium scale of nature between the cosmic and the subatomic, we find biological life, from cells and molecules to plants and animals. And the DNA molecule is the fundamental genetic blueprint of it all. In this video, we're going to examine DNA from a mathematical angle to better understand its double helix geometry. As we'll discover, it's the very same double helix pattern the prime numbers make when expressed as a base 12 cycle, or what I call the prime vibration. If you're new to my videos, let's start with a quick recap of what the prime vibration is. It begins with the idea that nature, at its most fundamental level, follows cycles, and that cycles, when expressed over time, create vibrations. Practically every branch of science shows this to be the case, with vibrational cycles being the universal expression of nature, from electromagnetic waves, brain waves and gravity waves, to growth cycles, life cycles, and evolutionary cycles. As the language of cycles and vibrations is mathematics, it is through number cycles that nature can best be described and understood. And the most logical cycle for nature to follow, I suggest, is the base 12 cycle from 0 to 11, the same clock cycle we use to tell time, also called the duodecimal system. That's because base 12 offers the best versatility for its size, with five ways of expressing itself, in half, thirds, quarters, sixths, or twelfths. In contrast, the base 10 decimal system adopted by science to do mathematics is not nearly as efficient, with only three ways of expressing itself, in half, fifths, or tenths. As such, the base 12 cycle is a logical choice for nature with plenty of evidence to back it up. From the 12 color frequencies of light and the color wheel, the 12 note chromatic scale of the musical octave, the carbon atom critical to life with six protons and six electrons, photosynthesis, which converts six molecules each of carbon dioxide and water to six of oxygen for the air we breathe, to subatomic structure itself, with 12 fundamental particles of matter. Now, in mathematics, the prime numbers are the most fundamental building block, as every possible integer is either a prime number itself, that is, it can't be divided any smaller, such as 5 or 7, or the product of prime numbers, such as 35, 5 times 7. As such, the simplest way of describing the base 12 cycle is with just the four positions at which prime numbers can occur in any successive cycle. These are at 1, 5, 7, and 11. Note that this excludes positions 2 and 3, as they only generate prime numbers in the first cycle. Still, there's an even simpler way of describing the base 12 cycle, as cycles of just two positions instead of four. Let me explain. If we view those four prime positions as vector arrows of length equal to their value, we see that positions 7 and 1 point in opposite directions, as do 11 and 5. And because opposite vectors subtract, we end up with two net vectors of length 6 at positions 7 and 11 only. That is, 11 minus 5 equals 6, and 7 minus 1 equals 6. This creates a base 12 circle of radius 6 with positions at 7 and 11 alone, as shown here to the left, which, when plotted over time, creates the double helix prime vibration on the right. The black wave is the vibrational pattern position 7 makes, and the red wave is that of position 11. And when we view that base 12 cycle repeating over time, we get a single wavelength of the prime vibration oscillating back and forth as a standing wave of 12 quantum frequencies or geometries, the red wave moving left to right and the black wave moving in reverse. Importantly, each of the 12 quantum geometries is defined by its vertical amplitude, its polarity ratio above and below the neutral axis, and its spin direction. These are the very same properties that define the subatomic particles of quantum physics. Probability amplitude as mass, electrical charge, and spin. It's this prime vibration that I've been investigating for some time now as perhaps the universal energetic blueprint beneath everything including consciousness and reality itself. And as we'll now see, it seems to be the blueprint of DNA too. In each strand of DNA, 
Amino acids are created in combinations of three bases, called a codon or triplet, from four possible choices, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, or A, T, G, and C for short. It's strings of these base triplets that form the sequence of the genetic code running the length of the DNA molecule. This matches how, in each base 12 cycle of four prime positions, the next prime candidate, call it P4, is determined by the previous three, where P4 equals P3 plus P2 minus P1. For example, prime number 11 equals 7 plus 5 minus 1, just as 13 equals 11 plus 7 minus 5, or 17 equals 13 plus 11 minus 7. Again, this relationship holds because the four prime positions of the base 12 cycle, 1, 5, 7, and 11, can be expressed as two net vectors of equal length, 11 minus 5 and 7 minus 1, which we see as the same formula above, just with the terms reordered. In practical terms, a smaller prime position is always paired with its larger counterpart on the opposite side of the base 12 circle, six positions away. It turns out that DNA follows this very same pairing rule of the prime cycle for the way the four bases combine to create two helical strands equally spaced apart. A longer adenine base on one strand is always paired with a shorter thymine on the other, while a longer guanine is always paired with a shorter cytosine. This creates two base pairs of equal length, which in turn maintains a constant separation between the two DNA strands along their entire length. In fact, this specific pairing is the only configuration that allows the hydrogen bonds necessary to bond the dual strand structure together. Further, like the two prime waves of the prime vibration, the two strands of DNA are anti-parallel copies of each other running in opposite directions. This is how DNA clones itself throughout an organism. Interestingly, each full turn of the DNA double helix also follows the golden ratio proportion of approximately 1.618 to 1 in terms of length versus height, of 34 angstroms long by 21 angstroms high. Covered in more depth in another video, the golden ratio represents the mathematical relationship between two successive generations of any cycle, basically the traits inherited from parent to child, and a pattern seen throughout nature. So in the case of DNA, the height of the double helix can be considered the current generation, while the length represents the next generation a full cycle away. As such, the very shape of DNA is encoded with this geometric relationship of continuity and regeneration, a geometry synonymous with life itself, and that seems to begin with the base 12 prime cycle. However, because the 7 and 11 prime positions are separated by four positions, or basically one third of the base 12 cycle, the prime vibration has a lopsided 2 to 1 geometry, two helical waves of equal amplitude, but staggered four positions apart. Sure enough, the two spiral strands of DNA exhibit this same asymmetry, called the major and minor grooves, which serve an important purpose. The major groove makes it easier for the hydrogen bonds to connect the bases. This 2 to 1 vibrational asymmetry in the prime vibration may also explain why, at the subatomic scale of nature, quarks have plus 2 thirds and minus 1 third charges, and why the up and down quarks combine in that same ratio to form protons, two ups and one down, and neutrons, one up and two down, of which all atomic nuclei, nuclei are made. This asymmetry may likewise explain why the central core of each fundamental structure of nature is hidden from physical perception, from atomic nuclei and galactic black holes to the point of self within consciousness. The core of the prime vibration here, at position 6, is where the geometry dips below the reality axis, forming a literal void of imperceptibility between positions 5 and 7. This is why I also believe that DNA has a hidden aspect within, beyond just the two physical strands we can see. Thanks so much for watching.